cursing, no cursing. Oh, you can curse uh, as much as you want. Okay, okay. No, no, I'm just making sure because there's times where it's like, oh, my bad, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, no. Uh, go for it. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I always slip. So. Nah, that's, we're human. Who yeah. Cares? Well, <laughs> I am. I am here. Uh, actually, welcome everybody to the Paint Method podcast. Welcome back. We're gonna we're gonna start saying the number one paint podcasts in the world that's right that's we're gonna cool. just speak it into existence i did do a search we're not yet but i'm just gonna say it number mm-hmm. one paint method podcast in the world uh as you if you don't know already the paint method is about passion action intent new and teach discovering where you are creating where you go next and uh you know we want to have conversations with creatives who are not only on their journey but they're still creating it they can look back on it and uh, it's just so much to learn from so uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe, like these, so you get updated anytime we post a new one. Or if you're listening on an audio platform, just follow the podcast. It's the, the best way to support it. But I have an incredible guest today who's just going to give us so much creative insight. I already, I already sensed it because we were just chatting a little bit. But my guest today is music producer Brian, also known as Brian Yepa, Yepes. Yepes, yes, Yepes, sir. yeah. yeah. I multi platinum producer let me repeat that because i don't think you really picked up a multi-platinum producer composer songwriter i'm sure there's more titles father yep father Father, yes uh he's produced for some of the most influential uh music creators icons just to name a few juice world don toliver jack harlow post malone big sean so many more we're going to get into more of this right right thank you for being here Let's get into it. Yes. Thank you. It's an honor to be here for real. Yeah. For real, for real. We are all on our paint journey, but where are we now? And where do we go next? This is how passion, action, intense, new, teach. This is The Paint Method. Yeah, cool. We, We can always adjust as we go, but man, welcome. Thank you, man. Thank no, you, thank, thank you, you for thank being you. here. I saw I saw your story a couple of nights ago. You were at the Travis Scott. Yeah, concert. yeah, yeah. I'm re- I'm really close friends with Chase B. Yeah, I've been working with him a lot since uh, that since when was the last time Astro was in Sacramento? 2019. Yeah, yeah I right? met him at the airport there. 2018 or 19. Yeah, yeah I had met him at the airport there. Um, it was funny because he had the. I don't know if you remember when he, they were previewing the reverse swoosh on the on the Nikes. Yes. And so I seen someone with those shoes on. I didn't see it was Chase, but I seen the shoe and I was like, "Who the fuck is wearing these fake shoes?" Bro? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking they're fake, and I see it's Chase. I'm like, "Oh no, this, these are real. This is Chase." Yeah. And I was on a call. I was waiting in the airport already for an hour. My wife was late to pick me up, and we were gonna go to Astro World actually, mm-hmm. straight from the airport. I was coming back from working with uh, I was working with Hip Boy on some stuff at the time. And uh, I hung up the phone on my wife. I was like, one second. <laughs> I just connected with Chase. And from there, we just, we became good friends. We have several records together. You know, yeah. he he's who got me connected with Don Tolliver and, and you know, Travis. Which that and, record is <laughs> fire. <laughs> Thank you, Like, I, I can't wait to just get into a little bit about your process because you're an artist. Yeah, yeah. I also feel like, and not to, I, I want to hear more about the story, but also I feel like, producers are like a crossroad right. of creative artists and you got to be a little bit of a nerd you got to be a little bit uh, of a tech nerd right majority of producers are huge nerds and we're yeah. all nerds we're all nerds for sure there's there's some that know how to hide it yeah there's some that just like stay quiet and pretend they don't know too much but we're all nerds we're all nerds for sure i feel majority. like that's probably why i relate more to like the producers than like the artists oh yeah man artists sometimes don't even know what we're doing yeah they're there to vibe artists are vibes man they know how to capture the vibe and really show it out yeah yeah you know we're just in the background sometimes but did you ever when you started your career did you ever have that in the back of your mind like i'm gonna be an artist did you ever start that on your journey what um my journey started when i was like my musical journey i always played at church funny enough mm. i was 12 years old when i picked up a guitar i picked up a guitar because at my mom at the time was married and my stepbrother would bring all these girls to the house and he'd play his acoustic with some of his friends. And you just hear the girls singing and it'd be, you know, he knew how to pick them up. He church, to, he was, was he playing church music? No, nah, he was not playing church <laughs> music. He was playing like Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkins. Like yeah. we were very big into like, yeah, Oasis, like just alternative things. That's kind of what I grew up on. So I, I was like, yo, teach me some songs. He taught me some things. And then 
we would go to church. So the church, the church youth pastor was like, hey, for every worship song, I'll teach you a Metallica riff. I was like, that's actually a fair trade. That's a deal. That's a fair trade. I like that deal, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but that's so it started there. But then what happened when I went to high school, I started a, a hardcore band. It's like a really underground music. So I, I always wanted to be at the time in a band and tour around. Yeah. But when we recorded our first thing, that's where I fell in love with producing. But my mentality in music was always like, I want to be in a band or I want to be in something like, you know, as kind of like as an artist. But when I was producing my first, when when I went to, I went to college for like audio engineering because none of my friends wanted to teach me mm -hmm. how to like really produce. You think they were like holding back? Like they didn't want you to know or they just <laughs> didn't know? No, no. I, I think they just didn't have the patience. Yeah. You know, there's, there's some people who just don't know how to teach. You know, yeah. I, I can see where they can't teach respectfully. Yeah. I no, I'm, <laughs> I'm learning how to be a better teacher because I, I feel like sometimes I get so frustrated. I'm like, you know, just figure it out. No, for, for me, it's like just be in the room and catch whatever you could catch. Yeah. That's how I am. Like, yeah. And that's how I learned, too. Like, if you just let, let me in the room, I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Potentially. And, and I'll make it my own. So they let you just. They'll let me be in, in the, the room, room. But the producing and, and recording thing was way too much for me to really understand. Just see someone like on the computer. Yeah. So I, I had to actually like, yo, I, I got to actually probably go to school and like understand the process and what's my workstation what's my daw like what mm -hmm. what do i use um but yeah no when i started producing i had the idea of actually recording artists mm -hmm. not making the music but i i took an internship at some spot in fremont because i went to school out here in sacramento when yeah. i because i got married and from the moment i got married i actually was going to school in la okay and i transferred it to some school here some random school yeah. But I, I took this internship at this like studio that was producing really good pop punk bands, like okay. really successful. And I learned that I hated it. <laughs> producing? No, engineering. Oh, engineering. I okay. was like, dude, I don't have patience to deal with people's attitudes, like personas, egos. Is engineering like a gateway <laughs> to producing where people may easily get introduced to the world? Oh, no, I mean, world? there's amazing engineers. I think engineers is one of the biggest keys, even for okay. producers. Like I, and, I'm, and I'm so thankful I know it, but at the time, I was dealing with bands, not rappers or people, right? So, mm -hmm. like, you're dealing with, like, five, six people and then a couple more engineers. And, you know, it's, you know, bands get paid very different than rappers, and unless you're a huge band. You How so? You mean just because the was, culture doesn't stream music as much? Or? Well, this was more an underground culture. Ah, it wasn't okay. like a, you know, so at the time I'm, I'm seeing this and I'm seeing all this hard work and I'm like, you know, I have a family. So I was like, this is not making sense yeah. as much as I thought it made sense. Are these like screamo bands? Kind of. Yeah. yeah. It's in that. It's in actually it's in that pocket of world. And like the under oath type of bands under oath is big though but yeah, yeah they're big it's it's like the people who look up to under oath yeah. in a way and but i was i was like you know damn i don't know if this is making sense i'm not liking the energy as much as i thought i would and it's it just seems like it's a lot of grinding and hard work it just you know to me i was a mailman at the time i'm like bro i already wow. grind hard enough as a mailman and i i hated my job as a mailman but i was thankful for it but mm -hmm. I, that's not what i want to do and um man i I just remember at the time, this was when, this is when Kendrick, Drake, and J Cole were like the ones that everybody was looking into. Like yeah. J Cole had Forest Hills Drive, Drake I think was doing If You're Reading This Is Too Late or What a Time to Be Alive around that time. Yep. And Kendrick, Kendrick just did To Pimp a Butterfly. Yeah. Okay. So this is like when music was like in in a crazy space. That was like solidifying those three, as like new icons not yes. just like popular rappers you always saw blogs like posting them like yo which one is this like these are the these are the, like the trinity like yeah. people would always consider them like the rap trinity and i still think they are obviously do they have a song together the i don't think all, i don't think all three together no not yet that not would yet. That, they need to they need to yeah need just to. for us they need they, to. they need yeah. to because that, that was an era it's a, it's an era that should still it still exists in a way in its so, own world so in that era you were hearing this was that this is when so the thing is i used to listen to a lot of rock I, okay. I come more from a rock base obviously i've always listened to hip hop and rap my whole life but rock was always like alternative rock and all that stuff was like my stuff that i'd really listen to at the time but when they came with that i was like i'm studying this yeah although I, I, you play the guitar really well i saw your videos <laughs> thank you yeah 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 it's uh, that was my first instrument yeah and um yeah no man i was studying these these things and i i was always just youtubing like ovo 40 Mm -hmm. which is a Noah Shabib, great, great producer and engineer. Just that's Drake's right hand when it comes mm -hmm. to creating. And 
I was just like, yo, I keep seeing these videos, and it would lead to, like, a video of Boy Wonder, which is an insane producer. And I started saying, like, yo, what is he doing? He's creating. He's this. So I went back to school. I spoke with, like, the dean of my school. I was like, yo, I need to get into producing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, he's like, oh, you don't want to do engineering? I'm like, fuck engineering, bro. I want to produce. Yeah. And so you're at school now. Uh I didn't graduate high school. I didn't go to art college. Uh, did that help you fast track your skill sets because you had that foundation? Um, I think thinking of, I, I want to say yes, just because I don't know what it would be like without it. Right. Mm -hmm. I can't like as much, we could play devil's advocate. I, I feel like now that I think I know everything, I, I could be like, yeah, I mean, I could have learned this shit on my own for sure. I think a lot of people could still learn this like off YouTube or like even off just being with someone that they know. Yeah, but I guess I took a different route that like I can't imagine it a different way just because I'm a very hands on person. Yeah, right? like you can explain to me something if I understand it and you explain it, it'll make sense. Yeah, but at the time it was like, bro, this is like new to me. Like I don't, know, I, don't I didn't know what an EQ was, what a compressor was. I didn't know how to automate. You know, th yeah. that's like the that's like diving in deeper. Like what plugins do what what how to get an effect. Like I remember asking my teacher like, hey how do I make this sound like it's underwater? And mm. I'm sure you know what I mean. Like that's yeah. like when Drake was always doing underwater yeah. type beats. But yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. the, yeah, the, um, God, there's, so I use Ableton live to do all my show mixes and right. I've been using Ableton for, I mean, since it, I mean, 10 dog. years and, um, and actually shout out to Joseph one, who's a DJ in Sacramento who used to do all my mixes for me and he introduced me to it. And I just, it's really all I know, but you start to learn these, you know, effects. And I know just surface level. Right. And it, that even that is still like, you know, there's so much more there's a to lot. learn. There's a lot to like spice your ideas yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. So I just remember all that. But yeah, no, when I became a producer, I actually had more of a mentality of just creating for the person. Yeah. And I, I found like, uh, I don't know if the love is the right word, but I found like an acceptance of like, yo, know, like I'm okay with finding what you're looking for. And, and, and so was that your ultimate motivation then helping them find what they're looking for? Or was it the process of it that? It started like that. It, okay. st it started like that. Cause I think in where I'm standing now is very different. Cause at the time you're, you're so desperate to have something. Right. So like one of my first placements w was with this artist from Toronto called K forest. Okay. And then it followed up with Lil Xan, which is super random. Right. And how did so, they find you? Well, no, man, it was the people I was working with. So, like, if I, I never, it, this sounds crazy, but I never intentionally wanted to work with K-Force or Lil Xan. I was always making ideas for, like, whether it's Drake or Post Malone or yeah. Sway Lee or whoever. But the thing is, the idea just fit the person. And yeah. someone would introduce me, like, so, like, I sent an idea. It was, like, a guitar idea I think I was doing on some R&B vibes. And I think I was doing, I forgot who I was doing it for. I think Ty Dolla Sign or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then... One of my buddies was like, yo, this guy K-Force got on it. It's coming out next Friday. Cool. I was like, oh, wow, this is like my first record. This guy's pretty respected in the city. You know, I was like, okay, cool. Like, I was happy, and I was like, let's do another one. Let's do yeah. another one. So I started I started with that mentality of, like, let me try to fit people's sound. I think now where I'm at is, you know, this is what I created. This is what made me feel good. Yeah. And if it resonates with you, you could get it's like It's, you know, I'm, I'm sure – is relatable with these like whatever you feel like painting and whatever style you feel like painting in yeah you respect it but it's like there's an aesthetic that comes with because and, and here's the thing the aesthetic is based on your skill set it's based on your taste right it's based on your the decisions you've made up to that point that feel good to you it's like combination a lot of probably untold unsaid things as well and right. that becomes your brand your aesthetic my my brand is just messy because i i don't care to, to make a mess but that's what's know? sick about it that's it's what, what's it, sick it, it has character so so you when we started with k forest do you think that was the beginning of discovering that a, your aesthetic that was the that was the beginning of me feeling good as as a producer i think what made me really catch my aesthetic like what started becoming more me mm -hmm. um damn because a lot, a lot of the projects was like a lot of things I would do is like, oh man, like, for example, even my record with Juice World. That idea was for Travis. Wow. I was obsessed with the song called Maria. I'm drunk by mm -hmm. Travis, and 
it's funny there's people in the comments on youtube and even on genius that are like this sounds like maria i'm drunk version too and it's like yeah that's actually what i was trying to do <laughs> yeah nailed so, it <laughs> yeah exactly it's like i'm glad someone caught it but yeah. you know at the time i was doing a lot of type mm -hmm. stuff like trying to mimic things that i like and i don't think there's nothing wrong with that in art because that's sometimes you find yourself there's people that are amazing at that yeah but where I found it was when I did this song called Ring Ring. Ring Ring was ready in 2019. Mm -hmm. I started producing in 20, end of 2016, like November wow. 2016. Okay. But Ring Ring, I really did Ring Ring. That guitar joint was su supposed to be for Post Malone okay. intentionally. So when I saw Travis and Don Tolliver and Quavo and Ty got all on it together, I was like, oh, man. This is where I was like, I really did Ring Ring on some like, yo, like, let me tune back to my roots, like. I was listening to a bunch of Smashing Pumpkins that day. Mm -hmm. I was actually playing Smashing Pumpkins, and I was like, I got lost in one chord that was not in that song at all. I was like, okay, like how can I turn this into its own thing? And yeah. at the time, Post Malone was working on some rock vibes, alternative rock vibes, and I was like, okay, let's do something sick for Post. Yeah. And when I sent it, I accidentally sent that to Chase B. <laughs> and so Chase B uh, texted me like two, three months later, was like, it was on New Year's Day. Actually, on New Year's Day. That's why it's called Ring Ring. Okay. It was 2019 New Year's Day. Him and Don were like, yo, we got a crazy one. Yeah. And I was like, all right, sick. And it was just Don at first. And then I we go to LA. I was supposed to link with Chase. Chase like uh, had me waiting outside the studio for a while. What's a while? Uh, it was like two hours. Okay, that's a, a while. Two hours. That's a while. <laughs> but, you know, I was Worth I was the like, wait, though, I'm yeah, sure. So I was waiting. Um, He actually was like, yo, do you got something else to do? Like, I'm going to hit you when I'm free. And he's like, Quavo's still here. And, you know, you know how sometimes when it comes to specific artists, like, if you're not just there from the rip. And you know kinda, this now. Yeah. You know now being on the inside what it was like then, you know, looking at it from the outside. Yeah, so he, he, he hit me the next day because we linked up the next day, and he's like, bro, he just plays it, and it's Quavo and Don. And then, wow. And then we were going to release that um, end of 2020 or like mm -hmm. sometime in 2020, like early. We were going to really, really release it early 2020. And then it was going to go towards like the end of 2020. And the reason why we went towards the end of 2020, somewhere almost around March or summer, uh, Chase gets a text from Travis and mm -hmm. is like, I'm jumping on Ring Ring. And wow. I have in mind, like I've been chasing Travis, I think, since 2018. Uh -huh. So I was like, oh, man, this is crazy. And. I hear Travis's version. Chase is just texting me like, bro, this is going to go out of here. Yeah. Song gets leaked. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man. And then the whole, you I know. I feel like that kind of makes things cooler when they're leaked. I don't know if that's on purpose. There's, like a there's marketing. A, the whole leak thing is a different story. It's scary because it, it is cool because when when there's a successful leak, you're like, okay, it's going to come out. Because Juice World leaks are like a thing. Oh, it's bro. like a YouTube Discord, like people are oh, they're brother. into the leaks. And then if they produce one of the leaks, they're like, all right, we're gonna put out like I think <laughs> um so I told you I had the opportunity to do these uh visualizer music videos right. for Juice World's team post mortem. One of them I think was Smile with Sick. the with the weekend, but I think the original smile was a leak. And then the weekend hopped on hopped it. Hopped on it, yeah. Afterwards, which is sick to see that they're still putting, you know, his work to, I mean, you know, was, to work somehow. I mean, it was still amazingly produced. Uh, it was a great song, but I remember, you know, the the uh, stuff coming up about the song and just going online, and people were like, "Oh, they finally made the leak a song." <laughs> right. So for like a leak to become something, and I feel like it's the fan feeling like they were they knew something before everyone else. Right. No, it's a. Uh there's there's that version right like if, yeah. you, if, if but then there's the version where there's people who really look for the leak that they're the ones leaking at that point yeah and, and there's i mean there's two worlds like i think it's cool to see a leak and it's going successful and it's like okay cool it's still gonna stay alive and yeah knowing that but when it leaked for me i was like oh man like especially like the cactus jack people like they move very particular like if there's a leak probably an 80 20 chance that it's not coming out wow so i'm thinking like wow this is done Oh man, I, I was so sad. I was like, dude, this sucks. But dude, like two years later, it still came out. Yeah. Which I was like, oh. It's, and then anytime I see Chase, I'm like, dude, is Ring Ring still a thing? And he'd be like, of course, of uh -huh. course, of course. So I was like, all right, sick. So, nah, I mean, that was a cool record. That was a cool. That's that's a record that taught me patience. Mm -hmm. But that's also a record that taught me like, yo, whatever you like, just yeah. do what you like. Like, don't. I think that's one of the records that stopped me from trying 
to please others. Like, you know, there's there's specific producers I'd be like, oh, I'm just going to send you a bunch of Drake, Drake type vibes. Yeah. No, like if I'm in a Drake mood, I'm going to think ideas like what would I see Drake on that he's still not on yet? Yeah. I'm, like you got to catch the new wave, right? Like there's a lot of people that are great in the like, oh, like I'm going to keep doing like. Like he just released for all the dogs. I'm gonna keep doing. It similar to yeah. what's popping right now. Like I'm gonna do another first person shooter. It's, yeah, that's great, but it, it already exists, mm-hmm. right? So it is, it, we still need people to do things like it to keep the sound alive. But then there's the ones, there's the creatives that are in the back where it's like, what's the next wave? Well, the beauty like, of of music and art and all these things is when you think you've heard it all, there's something that comes that like it could even sound maybe similar. Obviously, there's a structure that is similar influence, but uh, there's a lot of influences everywhere but then you feel like this is new this feels special because say first person shooter w- with just one of them on it right. just drake or just j cole may or may not have the same or bigger impact you, we'll never know but nah, that, that art they happens needed each other they needed yeah. each other for sure yeah like that art happens in a moment and and so i'm curious you know you got your first artists like the k Forest jumped on on a song you're in a transition in that time like you went from engineering you know you're at producing school or yeah. just music school and and then during this shift because a lot of producers or artists are, are end up in that place and don't trend up they don't right. get more opportunities somehow something happens what do you think it was for you that helped put action into that shift where things started really happening for you? Um, man, I, I always want to say, like, my family and kids, mm. my wife, my kids. I, I come I come from a family that doesn't really do this. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the first in my family to do something creative and, you know, have some sort of success like this, you know. Um, but every time something funny happened in, in my career, like a moment, whether it's good or funny or whatever, mm-hmm. I always just look at my daughter and my son. At the time, it was just my daughter, though. Mm-hmm. But I'd always look at her and be like, man, like, I didn't grow up with a dad. So I'm the first at being something that I didn't grow up with. So I'm like, dude, I need to be the most kick-ass father ever. I need to make sure, like, yeah. you know, at the time, I was like, I don't want my father to see me as some male man. My, my daughter to see me as some male man. I was like, yo, like, what is this? Yeah. You know, I'm so young. Because I knew, I was always aware that I was so young. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with people who are mailman. <laughs> it's just, Not at all. Yes. But at the at the time, we love I, and appreciate our mailman yeah, for the record. We, for the record. Mail, that's a that's a very you know I pre- I appreciated the job at the time, but you know, it's something when you know what you want to do. Yeah. When yeah. you know what you want to do in life, and you're not doing that. That's at the time I was like, bro, like, I want to give the example to my kid that they could do whatever they want. Yeah. So anytime I get any win. And I still do that. Anytime I get anyone, I always make sure I get another five with it. Yeah. It's and chasing so it. It's it's that. And like it, when I did the K Force thing, I made sure to get K Force's connect. Mm-hmm. I made sure to get his engineers connect, his other producers that were on the project. And every person can always lead you to another and to another and to another. It's, and that's the networking game, of course. You know, it's like networking one on one. Yeah. But like that's how I thought. It's like, okay, like if I get this record, I need to make sure I get another record. And then another record, and then another record, and it's just like each record just starts connecting and connecting. It might get bigger, it might be a smaller one, but no, as long as I get another one, yeah, and I get paid and I get opportunities, cool. That's how that's how I started. Momentum's really hard to start, but once it's going, it's also really hard to stop as well. Consistency, at least in in this game, is not easy. Mm There will be producers who will land a record every two years, and it's like. It might be a big record, it might be a small one. You'll just be like, damn, like, oh, man, I almost forgot about you, right? And it's yeah. like, and that's like, when you think of it, it's like, damn, do I want someone talking about my brand like that? Hell no, I want to make sure you know I'm doing something, whether it's big or small. Oh, yeah, Brian's every month, another record, every yeah. other month, doing something crazy, or, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah. that's kind of, you know, everyone, everyone's comfortable in their own form. Everyone's journey is so different. Yeah. So someone will like not you won't hear from someone and then next thing you know they do the next single. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, cool, you're back, like sick. And you being in Northern California, you know, yeah. it, it's not the most desirable for entertainment, uh, 
man, it's a challenge. How, a how challenge. do you, how do you work with that? Cause obviously I can relate to it, but I'm curious how you navigate living in Northern California while still being, you know, having to be fresh and top of mind of these top artists. Man, it's a challenge. Every, every time I'm in a room and any room I'm in, it's the number one question is, Oh, why aren't you in LA? That, and it's funny cause I grew up in LA. Um, I moved, I moved to LA, um, when I was 14. Okay. I came from Miami. I okay. was born in New York, but I, I I didn't live in New York to remember New York. But I, I was really raised in Miami, and I moved to L.A. when I was 14. But it's funny because I know L.A. well. So whenever pe- people think I'm from L.A. when I'm talking to them and whatever, but I'm not from L.A. Like, I, I live now in Sacramento. And uh, anytime I say that, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm from Sacramento. Like, oh, that's so random. That's yeah. the first thing that is said. But yeah. I know the feeling. <laughs> but I, I've made it a purpose to go to L.A., every month if not every other Mm -hmm. obviously like there's a lot of things that come with living out here it's like oh yeah i have to go there often make sure you know i'm I'm present Mm -hmm. there's times that i don't go there often but i love the effect that i have because when i'm there people really pay attention people like oh bro he doesn't live here so like we need to make sure we catch him and um the challenge is sometimes is when you live in LA, I have a bunch of friends that live there. They'll be like, bro, like I just got a call randomly at 3 a.m. to show up at the studio. Like if I got a 3 a.m. call, it take, even if I were to drive, mm-hmm. it would take five to six hours to get there. I'd probably already miss it. Whatever. But being going on. a family man and, and having your family that inspires you so much, is that a risk of having that access, people having accessibility to you as well. And then risking that well, yeah, so, connection. Yeah. It, well, the thing with having a family I mean, you know, the family requires a lot of time. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know, you balance, right? Like, I love what we love what we do. Absolutely. So I could get lost in my world creating and, and be like, oh, shoot. Like, that's right. I got to go to the fam. I got to go eat dinner. I got to go spend time, play play with the kids, talk with wifey, take wifey on a date. It's it's this balance of time. So I know if I was in L.A., the ch- it's it's already a challenge living in Sacramento as it is. Yeah. In L.A., it just it'd be madness and it's it's i think that's also a part of me prioritizing family you yeah know what I'm saying? it's it's the power i think family's first always the blessing of being removed from la or a major city like that is focus i mean i i was in here at uh not 8 30 a.m i'm in here between eight or nine and then i'm here until i have to go pick up my kids <laughs> or until my fiance is like what's up homie <laughs> like, yeah. dinner's ready <laughs> And but it it makes me way more disciplined with my time. My team knows this too. I'm like, we have to get all this done today because I'm gone at two thirty. Like, no, it, this is and this is a sick place. Oh, I, I could see I could see where it could be like we could you could get lost here if you yes. wanted to. But it's lessons learned too. It's because I've experienced not having balance before, and honestly, not to say that things are balanced now. Just more aware of what's more yeah. important and prioritizing. Uh, family way more. It was always prioritized, but prioritizing way more than I did in the past. And that's something you learned. That, it's funny because yeah. that's the number one question I get asked is, how, how do you balance your time with your family? Because people mm-hmm. see I have a family, of course. I, and I love to show out my family. So it's like... Oh, I love you, that about do, you, by the way. Yeah. I love that you share your family. Yeah, they're like, oh, how do you how do you balance your time with that? I'm like, man, you know, there's times that I actually fail sometimes. Like, But the thing is, I have my studio in my house. So the whole downstairs is my whole studio. So I think yeah. that's cool too, cause I, I love when my when my daughter and my son walk in and they want to play with the synths and they start joining or they'll grab the mic and you know it's it's I think it's important for them to see that too, mm-hmm. right? Because my daughter's starting to play piano. There's moments that I think it's my wife playing piano and I go I'm like oh it's my kid it's my it's my daughter yeah and then my son my son's just always so cute in my studio he's always like wanting to like he just observes yeah so it's like it's cool to see I think it's important to show the kids like the creative process like hey like i'm here i'm home oh yeah like i seen dad working on this or i seen dad doing this i see dad creating songs and I, I think even though sometimes i'm really stuck in work i think it's also cool for them to see me like still working right i think yeah. that's cool and i think one of the advantages i have from out here is i get to really live life disconnected from what other what everyone else in my industry is really doing not not i think i'm probably one of the only producers in sacramento safely that's doing what I'm doing here. Obviously, I'm sure there's a, m- a bunch of producers here, but I'm one of the only ones that it's really like at this type of level so on, far. In the so wave far. that you're on, for yeah, sure. So far, so far. Because, yeah. uh, you know, I want to see more people in the city 
do it. I think it's important. I would love to help build a platform here. What do you think is missing from this city that could inspire people that maybe have some musical interests? They're like, do I want to produce, be an artist, engineer? You know, you know there's so many jobs in arts, media, entertainment. What do you think is missing here or any city that's not L.A. that could inspire uh, people just get introduced to any jobs in in the entertainment. It's it's important to build with your surroundings and people who you see potential with. That's I think that's when you're in a city that doesn't have a platform like that yet. It's important for you to build with your surroundings and see what. And I think it's important your mentality, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes people get lost of their status in a city yeah. and, and in a small place, right? Rather than the world's so much bigger. Like it's funny because someone. There's a few friends from the city I have like, hey, man, you're the greatest producer in the city. I'm like, man, I'm trying to be the greatest producer in the Billboard's top yeah. charts. I'm, I'm trying to get in the competition. There we and go. Yeah, so it's like I think, when you know, the mentality shift is what has me where I'm at. I don't, I don't even focus on competition like that. I just focus on creating vibes that make people smile and, like, inspire people to do more. You know, anytime I get brought up to someone they're like, man, like, yo, like, you make amazing compositions. Like they really make me feel you're one of the best. I'm like, man, like you inspire me. Oh man, thanks for letting me be of inspiration. Like you could do it too, man. Like you'd be surprised. Like I started this without learning how to play piano. I still don't play piano like that. Really? Dude, I'm creating, I'm like still (laughs) figuring out notes. I'm like, oh man, like, have you, have you seen hilarious. that Rick Rubin interview with uh, Anderson Cooper? And he's like, I don't play any instruments at all. And then they're <laughs> like, well, what are they hiring for? He's like, my taste. Yeah. And honestly, I was like, this is brilliant. I sent that to so many people. That's a thing. Because there's so much more to creating than the actual tools. Because think about it. it's He's like a leader. Yeah. He's really like more so leadership, being confident in your vision. And he's got a, a lot of tools, a lot of people that he can guide and say, this is let me bring the best out of my artists let me bring the best of my team to help get to that sound right. that we all feel right now that's a, that's like it, it not every producer has to essentially create music yeah. producing is producing the word is is creating right it doesn't mean you have to be a musician yeah it could be hey man like i heard an idea you did let me have this idea one second i'm gonna sit with it i'm gonna find a home for it mm-hmm you just produced a home for it. If I, you find a home for the idea, meaning like, let's say if someone sends me a song and I can hear the song and I'm like, yo, man, Don Tolliver would kill this. Yeah. And I get it to Don. Some people consider that producing. In my opinion, I'm I'm such, but the thing is I'm a creative in the sense that I actually feel like I need to actually touch it musically because I'm a musician as well. Yeah, I, I don't like to... I don't really like to do that. Obviously, I would love to help a friend. If I can ever help a friend, I would. Yeah. You know, and we'll make it make sense. But at the same time, that is producing in a way. Because if, what would happen if I wasn't involved? Would the record really be produced? Yeah. And I think it's where like a DJ Khaled gets a bad rap is because though he may not be composing every note right. or so, but he has a vision. He has a way to bring that's art the, out of artists. That's producing in a way. And and I yeah. could, but I also understand when people are like, Oh man, it's not, I, I get what they're saying. Mm-hmm. But then if you're saying that about Khaled, you probably are going to say that about Rick Rubin too. Yeah. And, right? and insert like there's, producers you don't know, you haven't, aren't a face right. that are doing the same thing, but helping produce some of the most iconic music. Right. But man, comparing Rick Rubin and Khaled is crazy though. That's, that's yeah, two different worlds. But for sure, yeah, yeah, that's two different worlds. But yeah, no, it's it's yeah, it's a thing, man. Like there's so many types of producing. There's so many producings where someone will be like, all right, like let me listen to this. All right, yeah, now take take this off. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's officially a producer now. Yeah. Like uh, well, he, then he I've just you know what I'm saying? produced some stuff. You know, um, <laughs> someone playing the buckets yeah. somewhere. I'm like, you know, just add a little side rim to yeah, that. that yeah. In a way that yeah, like if there's that's why there's so many songs, even with Kanye, like there's so many songs you'll see a Kanye product, like a production credit list. Yeah. It's a list. Cause he really involves a lot of people to, which is incredible that he gives that much credit too. Cause you know, he could, he could get away with not doing that. Essentially. But like, essentially he's really creating much like, obviously this, he used I mean, Kanye's Kanye's creation process is, is beautiful. I've, I, any, I've never worked with Kanye yet, but like, I've yet. been around it, I, yeah, yet. But I've been around enough people who have, and anytime I know someone who has, I'm always like, "What's it like?" Yeah. And it's the way he works with producers is genius. Yeah. 
this is just genius. Like he really is sampling the producer. Wow. You know what I'm saying? He's wow. sampling moments of producer. Like he might, he, there might be three different versions of the songs and the final version is like a blend of all three yeah. maybe. And it's like, you just see his process and it's like, wow. Like I, I think that's, what's cool about creatives is everyone's process is so different. And you pick and choose which ones inspire you and which ones you let into your work process. Or like, I might take this every now and then yeah, and do it into my own. But yeah, no, nah, man, like in a way, some people, some, like I said, some people will be like, man, there's so many producers who did really what? And it's like, uh, why does that matter? Do you like does, the art? Do you like the song? Yeah. <laughs> who cares? Just enjoy the song. Now, I could see that coming from a, a competitive spirit, maybe other producers who feel type of way as much as it feels good to make art, to make music, what is the competitive nature like between producers or even people in music? Um, when I, when I started producing the era, I started coming into like actually producing records for others. The competitiveness was always like the least amount of people on a song was more respected in a way. And I, I, it's funny cause you know, when you, when you jump into a scene, sometimes the old, the old mentality still kind of stays somewhere in your head. And I'm like, yo, for me, the way I was working is I'd make a composition and I'd send it to someone who's good at making drums. Mm -hmm. And, though, you know, it'd be now two people pitching the ideas their own ways. And um, I think in the competition form at the time when I was coming up was the least amount of people was more respected. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you had like, four people on a song if the song didn't sound like four people was on it it'd always be like i'd always get comments like damn four people on a song <laughs> and it's like i could show you and that's why i started showing what i'm doing because yeah. i'm like listen you could question whatever you want i'm gonna show you what i did yeah everything else because you that, do share you do these videos on instagram how like i created it. how i made how i created this and you're playing all the even your own samples that you're creating or whatever sound you're making the guitar like yeah. you're playing those notes and then you play the final one and you're you're creating this building this right. and i feel like in the past when those tools weren't as accessible you had to have more people in a room and now the tools make it available for you to just really work stuff out on your own right take the time you need rather than having sitting in the room and the pressure of like i got to get this done while we are paying you know so much an hour for this studio <laughs> right no and, and that's the thing that to me my mentality is like bro i don't care if there's 10 people on a song mm -hmm. if this song sounds amazing that's great if if there's one person on a song that really didn't do much but their 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 effort was to make the record alive or whatever great i just care for the song to come out yeah i care for my time that i invested not to be wasted i i have a very big something's better than nothing mentality that's always been my mentality like you know there's there becomes people who get more success and they're like you know and it's great that they're about their business but then sometimes it starts ruining other things and other vibes that end up becoming something in the future and it's like oh man like now we haven't heard from you in three years because you're wanting a bigger bag you're wanting less people you're not trying to evolve and grow with people coming up because you know how it goes man so many there's so many producers nowadays yeah the producers that were up at the time when i started man now there's the new ones that i've probably started earlier than uh way later than me that are now up yeah and that's the competitive nature yeah. of any business you know like and it's, e it's even things as a, you can't control either. yeah it's, even as a performance painter look there's kids coming up now where but when i started you could couldn't even find it on the internet it was 2003 there wasn't even youtube yet there was one guy that i knew of and then there was like a handful of others and as i've grown i see these younger artists coming up and i'm like i get to know them i'll reach out I'm like yo i love what you're doing uh, yeah, or if they reach out to me i'm like yo stay in contact there's nothing cooler it's what because i always think of it like man i remember i remember being a producer and reaching out mm -hmm. to people i remember when i would get a response how much that shit would make my day. Yeah. Like I would literally be on my ma on my mail truck always trying to I would have an iPad in my mail truck and and literally be on a call with my one of my bestest friends creating uh -huh. and the moment he he sent something back through text, I'd email it through my phone. I'd be DMing people and yeah. then whenever I would get a response like it would really make my day. So like there's times that I actually will be like, "Okay, like whose day am I going to make? Like who am I going to let wow. inside and like, okay, let me hear some ideas or let let me you know, let me scout, you know, and I think that's important, right, to, to be involved with who's coming up and pay attention because sometimes people get stuck in the mentality like, no, nah, man, I am him. And it's like, great. Yeah, you are. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, you know, we don't 
there's no such thing as the top really in this game. People are always like moving back and forth. Like it just it keeps going. It's, it becomes a thing where it's like, all right, like, are we gonna keep playing this competition game, or are we just gonna be ourselves and actually start building and and really create a legacy, right? Like yeah. there's people who are like Kanye is an example. How many artists did Kanye bring that we really look up to? Travis is one of them. Yeah, I was just with him this whole time. The whole time I was watching the concert. I'm like, bro, genius. I mean, beyond music. Think about the designers, design the uh, just the creative well, Virgil, world. Though. Virgil was yeah. his intern, yeah? yeah. That's what I mean. It's it's things like that, like Jerry Lorenzo, I believe, yeah. had something to do with his starts too, yeah. and it, it's just things like that. Don C, like so many names that now have influenced fashion, you know, culture in so many different more, ways. And, and you think of things like that, and it's like, man, like that's an example. That you, we, you could be that yeah. at any level you could reach out to a producer that you're like oh, i see the potential that let me just create I, an open line i might open a door for that producer that might he might just skyrocket on a level that i couldn't see and that you know now you're part of his story now you yeah. don't know what that producer could bring to you you don't there's so many things that you could put into so many perspectives right yeah so and that's the thing sometimes when people will be like oh but you didn't tie business with him and now he's up and what are you winning? It's like, bro, it does not matter. Yeah. You know, like, I'll, I'll share this, this funny. I, I was going to mention to you earlier we were, when we were chatting, but this full circle story, I reached out to an artist that I look up to. His name is Justin Bua. Early on, he popularized uh, like an urban jazz hip hop art, but in a fine art style. Sick. So when I was painting, I growing up, I was into hip hop, break dancing, graffiti, you name it. Uh, that was what I was into. So I, saw him as a source of inspiration, I started creating something similar. I just sent him an email. He emails me back. And then a few months later, he's like, hey, I'm doing creative direction for an EA Sports NFL Street. I want to hire you. And oh, I was sick. like, played it cool, hung up the phone. I was like, what? This is crazy. Well, we were cool for a while until my, my prints and posters started selling a lot. And started competing for the space at the time on the oh. shelves. <laughs> so I get a letter from his attorney threatening to sue. Not suing, but they serve me. And they said, we're going to basically, we're, they use side-by-side -side examples. And I was like, I got to, how can I explain to him that, like, the, this is my inspiration from life. Like, you don't own the, the way a DJ stands, right. you know, or, or what I experience. So we stopped talking. And... And at the time, I was going back and forth between fine art and performance painting. And it spurred me. I was like, you know what? Fuck this fine art world. This is ridiculous. Right. I'm just going to go do performance painting. And it was like, I just never stopped showing up. I just kept growing in that. Because I would have done that in the fine nuts. art world. And I was like, nuts. all right, I'm going to put the energy here. Kept going. Fast forward 2020. We're all, we all got time. I, I went from 100 <laughs> shows to zero. He DMs me on Instagram. Is like, yo. We should we should do a live uh, IG live. We haven't talked in like ten plus years. Oh man, this is so. This is like okay. You got served and he DMs you. Ten years ago, you served me. And ten years later, he DMs me. But you guys haven't spoken. Haven't since. spoken. Oh shit. And I did not want to clear things up before. I was like, yeah, let's go live. Oh fuck. Together, <laughs> let's do it. Let's 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 because I, I was all love because. I knew the truth. I knew I wasn't right. copying his work. I was like, you inspire me, but also you don't know my story. Like I grew up playing the trumpet, jazz, music. Oh man, like, you play I, trumpets? I play the trumpet, yeah. Oh man, we got I gotta sample you one time. I had to you know, you'll get like three notes, but <laughs> now, perfect. I'll give it to you. But uh, you know, we we talked on this Instagram live and he was like, Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, well, I wish we talked about this sooner. I'm like but we didn't, and it's okay. You brought it up on the live. Yeah, I mean, it, you know. Oh man. It, but it was. It couldn't have been any perfect because since then, and uh, you know, Justin has become a great friend. I've stayed at his house. You know, we spend Sick. time, and I and I say this story because the full circle of, you never know, who's gonna, go on and, and be great and may offer opportunities because now I can offer him value in a lot of like how I market art. On, on social That's, media and, and so on and, and sales, so many other aspects that I'll call him for ideas and we can we have this open line now of That's, value. That's a beauty about being a creative, right? It's we I feel like we all have very beautiful hearts inside, deep down inside. Some people we deal with egos that cover mm -hmm. that beauty. Yeah. But it's it's there. Like it's it's funny. I think I, I told you earlier, I was like, yo, like 
that that comment when someone's like, "Man, I didn't think you were gonna get here." Like that's a uh, that's something that a lot of I've I've been dealing with that lately who, a lot. Who was that? Because you had a a story <laughs> that were like someone you know thought I'm gonna take this. You'll probably go away. You they, know, they, they didn't think I'd catch it. They didn't think I'd catch it. Yeah, and 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 in the midst of catching it, I'm I'm. I'm going to assume that that mentality was there, of course, especially when we, you know, when we cleared the air. Mm-hmm. The way we cleared the air was great, you know. Before Do I you want to give any backstory? Yeah, I'm gonna. It? Before I yeah. give any any backstory too, is this me and this guy are great. We're cool. That's good so to know. Yeah, so yeah. this is no as it should be. There's no beef. There's no nothing. But this guy was my first manager ever. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't say names because it's not yes. hard. It's not hard to figure out. It's, yeah. n- it's not hard to figure out either. It's but, more so like what we learned from the story. Yeah, it's it's uh he was my first manager ever a co-manager ever and he's the person that got me my first records Mm -hmm. my first major records the k forest record everything Mm -hmm. and um and i thank him so much to this day shout out to him because that changed my life and i always am grateful for that you know i'm saying that's that's someone who i respect tons Mm -hmm. um but there's an idea i made and when i sent this idea he's like yo bro put it on hold send me stems and in the music world stems is like if i make an idea it's literally every single track that is involved in the project for you to have full control of like you could really tweak it so he's like yo send me stems usually i mean someone's gonna mix it or tweak it yeah so i'm like all right cool i send him stems he's like yo whoever else has this tell them it's done i don't know what else they're gonna do to it because what i just did it's insane and then he calls me like yo bro like drake's people loves this this and that in my head i'm like oh shit it's drake you know, and this is this is around um I I believe this is twenty twenty. Okay. This is in twenty twenty, pandemic time. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure we were in a pandemic. Yeah, we definitely were, I think. This is a moment. That's like yeah, it's this is a, a moment. big like, moment though for it's and it, it, the you. song the songs so there's this time where Drake's Drake's premiering that he's gonna release a single. He's like on like a jet ski and stuff and it's it's laugh now cry later. Okay. So the I mean, this guy's telling me all this like probably like four four months prior i forgot how how much prior and i'm like yo okay i'm i'm excited to see what comes out of this and then i hear the song and i'm like damn it's the same exact chord progression the same exact spacing happens to be from this guy on the song i'm scared i don't know how i'm gonna tell him yo, i feel like he took something from me because it sounds it's too identical i'm getting calls from the people that i hit up and said hey put this on hold yeah one of them calls me drunk. One of my homies, he's like, you realize you just got a Drake single out? I'm like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. He starts FaceTiming me and this guy at the same time. The guy who allegedly. <laughs> yes, took, bro. Yeah. Because we're all, we're all, we're all friends. And yeah. I'm like, I call him like, bro, please stop. Please stop. Like, let me do. I'm scared. I'm thinking like, bro, I'm about to ruin the relationship that like gets me these records. Because he was, me and him were the ones that at the time. At the time in my career, he was one of the only ones that was actually bringing results to my ideas. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's other people I was building with, and luckily everybody else I was building with was really, like, it started showing after the yeah. situation. So it's like, all right, cool. Like, everything made sense after. But at the time, I was thinking, man, I'm about to lose a connection. I'm about to lose a network, someone that really put me on. This sucks. So I, I call the guy and I ask him, I'm like, yo, like, this sounds similar is a nine and you know he he kind of brushed it off like no nah, man i didn't do that this was me and so and so okay i was like are you sure it just sounds similar mm-hmm. man are you are you really questioning that um i would take this from you now nah, but how that <laughs> feel addressing it though like i know you're oh, thinking man. i don't want to ruin the opportunity but you're an artist you're just talking about like we're we are you right. know these like soft hearts inside but you now are you also have a business it's at the time the way i'm looking at it is like man this is, this is a drake single like this could change anyone's life mm-hmm. right so i'm looking at it like and it's it just i just knew that it came it stemmed from my idea too so I'm, I'm feeling super left i'm thinking man this is a moment that could change my life but at the time i i kind of was like i call my lawyer everything my lawyer's like man it's too much he says she said you got to get more concrete proof mm-hmm. and um I was already just taking it to the chin. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to have to work harder. This is what it is. And um, obviously it was that fear of dealing with politics and losing connections and his friends and what they might think and what, you know. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, whatever. Uh, you know, if if God wants me to know more, he'll let me know more. 
And so then, funny enough, this guy takes me to um, a Jack Harlow session. Uh -huh. I meet Jack Harlow and the other producer that he had done this with at the time was working very closely with Harlow, too. So <laughs> I meet the other guy for the first time. Yeah. And you know the first thing I the first thing if I meet someone I'm not gonna be like hey man you, you I think you remade my idea yeah I'm not gonna do that that's awkward and some and, people would yeah no but you're like I gotta play this I gotta play chess smart. man I gotta play chess I gotta really figure this out mm -hmm. and um I first of all he has a lot of the person that had remade it has a lot of great records he's a legend bro he's mm -hmm. an amazing person yeah great creative to mm -hmm. say. And I'm giving him his flowers for everything. And then mm -hmm. I asked him, like, yo, I got to ask you, because this guy changed my life. How'd you create this song with Drake, Laugh Not Cry Later, with him? He goes, oh, it started with the slow piano idea that he had. And, you know, I started kind of adding to it, and it became what it became. Yeah. And <laughs> it's funny, because when I brought that up to him, he's like, oh, you're a liar. And I'm like, how am I going to lie about that? Mm -hmm. Anyways, much respect to him, though. Much respect yeah. to him. And. <laughs> not not to spill too much tea, but at the same time, it's like that was a time ago. But the number one question was, you know, I'm not going to go and be like, yeah, man, you took that from me. And now you guys are going to defense up. And, you know, no, I'm, I'm I was advised from my lawyer. Mm -hmm. Bring everything up once everything's really ready. I go to this Drake and Kanye concert that they had at the in L.A. In the Coliseum. The Coliseum, because first of all, I'm a huge Kanye fan and I'm, I'm a huge Drake fan. That was an epic yes show the version that drake played laugh not cry later there was my version that i had zero clue was wow. going to be played and mentally i had already given the situation up to god i was mm -hmm. like god you know what man if you want me to be a part of this song figure it out i'm done because mm -hmm. i lost so much sleep i was talking to so many people showing all this but when this song came up it was like the the moment i finally was like man i surrender Wow. It's, it's all in your Amen. hands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like God was like, here's your golden ticket. Mm -hmm. Boom, Drake's performing it. I get a call from my lawyer, my manager. All my friends are like, it's go time. Yeah. My mentors, everyone's like, oh, shoot. Like, I go to Toronto. Uh, I had met Drake's manager briefly. Mm -hmm. And um, one, of, one, of, one of my mentors that was there and mm -hmm. and. God bless him for real. I, I know he told me not to mention his name when it comes to any of this. Yeah. But, you know, I was always thankful for him. Mm -hmm. But he, he put me on. He put me on and explained my story to one of Drake's managers. And Drake, you know, their team was very, very nice. Yeah. I actually was scared. I actually was like, oh, man, like. I feel like that's not their first rodeo dealing with this nah, one producers, though. Apparently, Drake gets sued every album. Yeah, from people. So like, it's gonna happen. And it's not like he, it's not like he does it off. Oh, I think a lot of people think like, oh, he got sued. He's too. No, he's nah. he does not know. Welcome it's, it's, to it's fame, the, success. Read the credits. Read <laughs> the producers. Read. There's a lot of times that you know things just get left out yeah. accidentally. And, and there's sometimes people don't know their laws. There's there's laws that protect us as creatives. Yeah. And people don't know that side. And in this case, I think that's what happened. I, I think the people involved in this song weren't aware of some of the laws creatively that you could be protected. Mm -hmm. I, I had to get litigators. I had to get um, musicologists. I had to get all these things to really plan something out. Mm -hmm. And I had to do a lot of communication. And in the end of the day, um, we were able to resolve this issue because we just communicated, man, because we, we were ready to take it to court, win or lose. Yeah. You know, we were ready. And um, honestly, I just felt in my heart, I was like, man, like, I know these people. Why can't we just talk and just find a solution where we're all happy? Yeah. And, like, let's just move on like it never happened, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, no, man, like, we did. We did. Obviously, it was some uncomfortable conversations we had to have. Some, you know, relationships probably won't be the same, but we, in the end of the day, much respect from at least my side. You yeah. Know? But me and the person that was my old, you know, co-manager, we're good. We were able to talk about it, and you know, I, you know, I, I, I still have the exact same amount of respect and love for him. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we we found a solution, and officially, real soon, obviously, all the metadata will be updated. But yeah, like I, I'm a producer, wow. own publishing, got everything I need to get from Laugh Not Cry Later, from what it was. Uh, you know, I think from that it, situation, what, the irony, right, of the, the, title, the title of the, the song. song. You know, I think every record that is produced has a little bit of something tied to you. I think I, for me, creating something is spiritual. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? It's very spiritual. There's a lot of emotion and things in it. Right. Like that. 
it's like character right like to put your character into these paintings like that's yeah. you right yeah, like yeah. there's something like i might see this but the person next to me might see this in a different form and really speak to them yeah you know what i'm saying it's the same with music but i think it's funny majority of my records there's always something in it that's like oh wow like yeah, L- was not all, but majority. I want to talk about that. One, thank you for sharing that story because yeah. I, I know that you, I'm assuming you had to grow so much personally through that. Like, you probably feel like you grew up 10 years just going through that. Man, those two years felt like forever. It was a lot of a lot of hurt, right? Because this is mm-hmm. my friend. This is someone that I, I considered a friend. I mean, it's, I would still say he's a friend. Obviously, sometimes time takes to heal, you know? Yeah. But time, time it, does heal. But, heal yeah. but no, he's someone that I care about tons and I'll always be there for no matter what. Someone that I'll always give him his flowers no yeah. matter what. And and there's no ever ill coming from my mouth from him. I think the situation helped me grow. Mm-hmm. It, I learned a lot in it. So I know I'll never, uh, God forbid I go through it again. But that's also why. But if you had to. I know what to do next. You're ready. Exactly. and, and th- But that's the thing, right, is. I never wanted to talk about this, but the more I thought about it, I'm like, man, if when I was in this situation, I didn't know who to talk to because no one talks about it when they go through it. Yeah. One of the people in that case, because the thing is that song has, that song has four producers. There's two producers that have nothing to do with this at all. Mm-hmm. Two producers that I just met, you know, so I just started working with. Um, And I feel like I should, <laughs> I should excuse the producers that don't know because it's, it's not, it's not the people who are in Drake's actual team. Mm-hmm. Like, like you know, have you ever, you, I'm just going to say one of the names that he has nothing to do with this just because I, I have to clear it off respect. Cardo got wings, le- legend. Okay, yeah. But that's one of the things I was scared of when I was facing this. Like, man, I'm about to ruin a connection with one of the biggest producers in hip hop, yeah. Cardo got wings. Yeah. And I was like, he has nothing to do with it. I didn't know that guy. So he had nothing to do with this case at all. So, yeah. but luckily, through a lot of good friends, we were able to speak and let him know, like, hey, this is what's going to go down, just so you I don't think, think I'm coming you'd be crazy. Surprised, or people would be surprised at what other people have gone through. So, right. you, know, you know, I went through some stuff recently, and the people that reached out to me, I would have never guessed that they had been through anything similar. Mm-hmm. They just reached out before I even, I even cleared the air. It was just like, hey, I went through something similar. I'm here for you. And I think that it is important to talk about those experiences you've gone through. Because when, when I was going through this, I was like, man, who who else has gotten their ideas stolen from and dealt with these litigators? And, man, like, dealing with litigation and music is not cheap. No. It's not cheap. It, yeah. It's getting lawyers and stuff. like, And I have, I have my own attorney, but my mm-hmm. attorney's like, oh, I don't deal with this. You need a litigation mm-hmm. lawyer. And I'm like, what? And then you go to them, oh, you might need a pair. You might need to get this. We might do retainer. I don't know if this is that. And it's just it's one of these things that you start – talking to a bunch luckily yeah. the first litigator we had was clutch yeah so and he he believed in the case heavy yeah and um but it's still scary it's yeah. still scary so i was just like yo like because in court it's always 50 50 doesn't matter whose side it is you don't know what judge you're gonna have you don't know whose heartstrings you're gonna pull you don't know if your case becomes now the example for the future you don't know yeah it's theater so, you know exactly. un- unfortunately court is theater and everyone's presenting anything goes uh, different stories to the same case. And yeah, exactly. And it, it's the thing with it is at the time I, I had no one to talk to. And, and if I talked to some of my friends that that just be like, oh, man, that sucks. But I always wish there was someone like, dude, what did you do? And so I think I was able to find three, four people that like have gone through it. And one of the people from that case has gone through it in their own way. Wow. And I'm thinking like, oh, man, like you'll be understanding. You know what it's like. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, my point is I didn't know who to talk to. And yeah. that's why I was like, you know what, man, I'm going to talk about this because it's important. It's, yeah. it's, it's important to not normalize things. Like one of the things I dealt with in this case was a bunch of stories like, oh, man, but I did this. I didn't get nothing for this. I did this. I'm like, bro, that's that's respectfully a you problem and that's not okay Mm -hmm. it's not okay to not get credited for something you actually did it's not okay to not get paid something you did it's not okay to not have something that you did actually take care of you and your legacy and and if you did that thinking that it was going to get you closer to someone i hope it did if that was your goal Mm -hmm. but in the end of the day you have to go to sleep now trying to make your wrongs like you're, you're you're repeating a cycle that you didn't like clearly yeah 
You know what I'm saying? It's like in art and entertainment, they're like, you should be honored that your work was stolen and used for something so great. Like whether it's art in an advertisement <laughs> right. or, uh, you know, a sound and, and, and it's sampled in a song. It's like, you should be honored. It's, it's, like, it's no. flattering at the end of the day. It's flattering, but it's get me right. Yes. Yeah. Like I don't, yeah. our work's not free. Yeah. You know, it's not like you approach me to see if it's one approved and two. Wh- wh- yeah, because wh- you could have if it if someone will approach you a, a certain way, you could be like, you know, just just credit me or, or like get me on the back end. However, you can figure Communication it out. Communication is key. Yes. It's, hey, I, yeah, I, we grabbed your idea. Yeah. We evolved it. And it is your idea. And clearly this and not even that, like w- me and this guy have more songs with Drake. Me and this person have. You know, we have a history of working together. Yeah. So, like, and you know, in any case, if there's a history of work, it, it becomes hard mm-hmm. because it's like, no, they actually do work together a lot, and yeah. they happen to have un- more songs with this artist. Yeah, and it's just like, okay, you know, it becomes a thing where it's like, yo, if you just hit me up, and that's the, that's something we talk about. I was like, man, if you would have just hit me up, boom. And he said the same. He's like, man, if you would have just hit me up, that there was an issue from the moment they performed this, like, we could have just. You know, he says that we would have done that, but I, I'm i sorry. I just trust my lawyer more when it comes to these situations. Yeah. And that's what I responded to him. And even what I sh- the story I shared earlier, you know, I had to grow up 10 years past when, when I was first served by that artist. Right. And as I grew up, I, I, as I've built a life on just living out my dream, answering my creative call, you know, j- and also building integrity as well, like like keeping your word along the way. So then later when I when I cleared it up, yes, we could have talked about it sooner with the, that other artist, but also I feel like I was in a more mature place to address it then, right. as long as it gets addressed. Right. And, and it's not a natural uh, skill for artists or creatives to communicate in that way because that's right. why we do art, because this we can communicate better with color and sound than we can with words sometimes. Right. And everyone's personality is so different. There's people that you'll meet and they're like, man, they're the biggest sweetheart in the world there's people you'll meet and they'll be like damn they're very quiet or though people you'll meet like oh man he's a hothead yeah you know what i'm saying and uh yeah yeah now in this situation like i said me and bro we're good like it actually you know he actually approached me very nicely and you know we both you know he, he i know he didn't like that i didn't communicate to him directly and i used lawyers even though i did try communicating directly but mm-hmm. the moment i tried communicating directly he was advised by his legal team to not speak because yeah to protect himself and i get it i yeah. get it it's, it's it's all business and at this point it's like all right we're just business right now yeah but um we were able to squash everything and you know i'm finally able to listen to that song without it being like oh man like i know this i know that and and it's you know it's something that i'm okay with talking about because i don't i would like to try to push change Mm-hmm. towards not always being silent in situations like these. I think it's important for people to know about these situations to prevent them more. I think there needs to be more laws mm-hmm. that protect situations like that because there's a fair amount of laws that do protect, but there's a lot of laws, too, that could also still prevent, that could still protect the people who are still stealing. And now you know? with AI... Well, not st- I don't know if stealing is right, because in this case, I don't want to say stealing, but, like, you know, in a way, it, yes. you know, somebody else could consider it stealing, but yes. Yeah. Like, and I think more so like uh, creative ideas being introduced by people in different ways, like whether it's AI or other tools, it's just, it's going to get more complicated, but that's also, yeah. you know, it's, I think you just have to accept it as the evolution of technology and art and how it intermixes. And, and yeah, the AI stuff is crazy. It's that stuff is crazy. Wild. I, I already see, I know in art it's insane. I've I've seen those oh, like yeah. those discords where you put something and it's like it really does a whole yeah image um, or art with it. God, what, what am I blanking on? I know there's Dolly too, and then Mid Journey is, yeah. is another one. <laughs> I think I've seen Mid Journey one. I, I yeah. think I've I've seen those. Those are sick. I mean, it's it's entertaining when you're just like, all right, like let's just put some stuff just to see. I think the first time I did, I was like, this is crazy. It is. This is crazy. I've put stuff in there. I've I've like put in prompts and then I'll I'll adjust the prompts and I'm like, this is too good. And it's entertaining. It it's is entertaining. Yeah, it's like, like what, what oh, else man. can I come up with? <laughs> uh, but what's what's interesting is my my theory is that, and this I think a perfect example of this was Drake's latest album cover. It was yeah, literally made by a child, <laughs> yeah. his son. 
he could have paid anyone anything to have anything made for him. But he's like, what feels real? He just said the title for all the dogs, like oh. he painted a whole dog angry. It was like a crayon, like yeah. dog, like it was just. And so I feel like we're gonna gravitate towards more childlike creations, and not necessarily in the quality, but the feeling. Like, where is the mistake? Where is it not perfect? Like, right. where when you're doing a, a chord progression, hopefully I don't right. know the right term, but if, like, your hands on the guitar do, don't meet, go, like, right on the beat. Like, it's just a, a little off. Like, those little things, I think. Character. It, it will give it's a character. Soul. It's a soul. It's a, it's a character. It's um, because music's dealing with AI, too, now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things, too, like that's going on obviously i think it's important to keep up with technology and understand what it is and see if there's a way to work with it and and add more to it you know what i'm saying not necessarily use it as a primary but like i think it's important in music when it comes down to this like in in art in general is to keep your soul in it right that's why people like you because it's you yeah that's why when people come to me and ask me like hey do you do you have any ideas do you have any song references they like me for me like yeah. i know um I just started becoming a, like, I would, I've always been a songwriter in a way, but like, I started actually like sending people references and stuff within the last year to two. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, man, like it's, it's something new that you get comfortable with. But yeah, like there's sometimes people are like, yo, I'm using this AI tool to songwrite in my head. I'm like, you gotta ease you. Like your best, the best songs are personal songs. There's yeah. songs that'll speak to you and you're like, man, that, that was personal obviously there's a bunch of turn up songs that people are like oh i love this and it's like yeah oh, it doesn't, it's but i've been thinking about that i see these ads for like uh write a book on chat gpt and it, yes it, Dude, it may yeah. give you step by step but i'm like it has a person live this <laughs> right. like show me the example in your life that this works if it does i'm following you to the end it, it doesn't hurt to try like there's one in music there's one for songwriting that like you'll write what you're writing and then uh -huh. it'll find options for you and you just read the options and it might it might make work so easier. this is where i i do love it is because i will go on there for uh ideas so for example i have this uh this course for artists to help them with their Sick. entrepreneurship uh, and so when I was creating the course, I would say like, okay, what would help a person with self-confidence? So I was like, can you give me prompts on what are areas in your life that will help you with your build your self-confidence? So it gave me those, but the thing was, it gave me the prompts, but now I'm like, okay, where in my life did I relate to these? <laughs> right. So using that as a tool to bring it out of me, and then I just said, oh. That's I'd, cool you teach that though in your yeah. courses because confidence is huge. Yes. And, and that's that's one thing. Like, I actually was just talking about this to to my manager. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of Benny X, amazing oh, yeah. producer. Yeah. yeah. He's a he's a good friend. Um, was uh he, Search he, and Rescue? Yeah, he did Search and Rescue. Okay. He did um he's a part of uh what's that song on Travis with Drake uh. Oh, uh, meltdown. Melt. He did meltdown. He okay. did. He's he's been doing a lot of things for Drake, Travis. He's one of the main producers for Yeet. Just okay. a, a legend. Yeah. Good friend. He's a father as well. So me and okay. him get along a lot on some like parenthood shit. Yeah. But I believe one, he's super talented. That's why he's where he's at. But his personality and his character uh -huh. and confidence, right? Because I a confidence is important, but showing that you have a personality in this game is important mm -hmm. a lot of times people are very dry and bland or quiet i, I fall more in the quiet space like I, I think once you get to know me it's like oh no he's he's pretty cool yeah but like but you were very chill yeah very chill I, i'm yeah. very chill that's uh, that's something that people people sometimes have different shells but with benny from the rip when you meet him it's like oh man he's his personality is great it's like yeah and that that's what carries him far too because it's not not only are you a fan of what he creates you're a fan of him yeah. And showing that sometimes as, as we're all brands, right? It's mm -hmm. important. And it's important. I think that comes off living life, man. I think there was a video you recently talked about in that. It's like, it's important to go live life. Yeah. And I always tell every producer that I talk to, I'm like, man, dude, like, it's not, it, no, it's not about being stuck in the studio 24-7 yeah. and praising these, like, 3 a.m., 4 a.m. nights of making ideas. Um it's about going outside, man. Go take your wife on a date. Go take your girl on a date. Go try to find a girl. Go try to find whoever you need to find. And then what you know? does that feel like? Like how right. do you use your art form, mine, painting, yours, music producing, or writing, 
and how do you translate that? How right. do you, cause, cause the greatest music we all know are about real life emotions translated into uh, sound texture or right. words. Right. Right. And that moves the world. It's a, uh, it's important to live life, to translate that to music. Right. Cause yeah. you could tell when something in music was made with an intention, with an emotion, with mm -hmm. a feeling, right. Rather than someone like, I'm just making this for this. Like I said earlier, like there's people who just make stuff to sound like this. Yeah. Now you could tell when someone's like, man, I just went on an amazing date with my wife, saw a movie that inspired the shit out of me. Yeah. I'm going to the studio. Yeah. And you hear and you're like, wow, this is crazy. This do is you ever read? No, I don't read enough. Or listen I, to I, I do. I do read, but like, <laughs> I don't read enough. So there's a, a book called Big Magic, and I only read like half of it. So don't, right. don't feel bad. But I gave this uh, book to my now fiance as a gift on our first date. Nice. And um, the book is about answering the creative call. It's like, and, and how the universe or God, or whatever you believe in, rewards you time and time again. So the more you answer it, the more you're given. There's a famous... Um, blinking on her name right now she's a she's a poet but she talks about you know the more creativity you use the more is given to you and so as you create as you answer your call over time what i guess how do you remove the space between idea inspiration and creation not even the final product but getting to your tools you know right. how do you how do you make that space smaller and and just really get out something that's like real raw from your moment of inspiration. It depends, right? And in, in music, sometimes I already have an idea in my head where it's like if something inspired me, I'll have to voice note something. Like mm -hmm. this is what I hear. And like then the goal is like how do I bring this emotion, whether it's like, okay, I'm gonna add a really deep bass that's gonna hit your soul, or oh man, I'm gonna get some strings because mm -hmm. you know, it would make you feel or oh, I'm gonna put my guitar. It just depends what I'm chasing, right? Yeah. But like lately I've been um late I, I feel like music's powerful. Music music can make you want to continue living life as much as it could also make you question it, which is yeah. crazy. It's it's a it's a power form, right? It's but that's a, art, right? It's art, yeah. It's that's exactly. real art that makes you feel for real. Or question or answer like this speaks for me or like I'm gonna live life or you know, mm -hmm. let's this you know, let's push living life though, because life is beautiful. So yeah. like it's a... Uh, I've always been like my goal lately in making my compositions is, you know, like I want you to hear that. I want I want to make compositions that when you hear it, it's like, oh wow, like I'm floating or like oh wow, like I want to go and like I want to call my wife or I want to like you know, yeah. I want to make ideas that like when my wife wakes up late, like you know, because I I like to work late night. There's something about late night that like everyone's asleep. I'm my mind's at peace, you know. I, I've been trying to transition to the day, but I love that. Like when I wake up in the morning, like, Hey, you got to hear this. Like, yeah, you got to hear this. Like, yeah. and it's just like, she'll hear and she'll be like, wow. Like you could just hear a lot of soul in this or, you know, and yeah. it's my wife's my greatest critic though. Really? That's great. Yeah, she's my greatest critic. She's definitely my greatest. Critic. Was that hard at first? Um, no, she's, she plays piano. I think she's always been so supportive of me, but she's also very honest with me. Uh, Cause she knows what I like. She Latin. Uh, no, she. Um, it's hard to explain what she is. She's Polish and okay. Belarusian and, okay. and, and all these things. She's like, I'm with a Puerto Rican, so I'm like, I get nothing <laughs> but honesty. <laughs> no, no, dude, that's real. That's real. No, she's one of those type too. Yeah. She's super honest. Like she's she's not scared to say she don't like something. Yeah. Um, and I'm Colombian, so it's like it's funny, right? So it's <laughs> like, like it's I'm like, Latin. Yeah. So you're it's Latin. like yeah, I get like we're two very honest people with that's each other. Awesome. But no, like hearing just always like hearing her input and like what she thinks it's like all right like how can i sometimes i'll make ideas i'm like how can i how can i wow my wife i want to wow, wow you wow like i just want to wow you like yo it's, it's what a sick. cool challenge to give yourself yeah. as a, as an artist because you cuz you know that the challenge that she gives you has probably helped you like grow and, and work an idea out better. Right. And so now that becomes the filter, it's like, I got to make sure I at least I wow meet her. or exceed that. Like, I, 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 and she, don't get it twisted. I've definitely wowed her, and I know she's so proud, but, like, I'm chasing, like, that whole shit, like, yo, you really just wowed your wife. Like, I'm chasing <laughs> that, like, oh, man, because the thing, my wife believes in me so much, man, so it's like, That's she's beautiful. not surprised that I have all the plaques that I have and that I've worked with the people I've had and, and, and still continuing doing things. Like, like yeah, like, I think I mentioned earlier, like I, I am actually doing like some artist projects and I've been working on some artist stuff 
with some great people. Um, like I've been working with Labyrinth. Oh, which I is love genius. Labyrinth. And shout out Labyrinth for real. He's he's one of my he's one he's one of my mentors. I just got really chills me. thinking about his sound and texture. The way he creates has inspired me tons, wow. tons. Even on and I started. He's one of the first people I actually heard, like my artist, like my actual mm-hmm. artist, artist stuff. Not not producing for other people, nothing like mm-hmm. actual artist stuff. And man, he's helped me tons. And shout out to him for even letting me like show him because man he's a busy man but like no he's become a really good friend a really great mentor wow someone that i'm currently working with as well and no nah, man like there's there's times that like i started doing this artist stuff and i'm like yo listen to this and yeah and it's just i'm just chasing these moments from wifey which is hilarious but as an artist <laughs> obviously as an artist it's important to have that mentality like whatever you like and that, and the, here's, so here's the balance. Cool. Like you answer the creative call to just get the idea out. Mm-hmm. And then now when you're like, I, I, I want to get this in front of people and I want people oh, to man. resonate this. That's when you start seeking the, uh, the approval of the right opinion that will challenge you and help you become better. People you trust. People yes. you trust. People you, not, and that, that's hard, right? Because I haven't experienced that yet. I have, mm-hmm. I've only released things with like local artists from here that I'm like okay with. Mm-hmm. Any any songs that you see me with like uh, Iguayaka, which is an artist from here that's amazing. Yeah, he's very creative. Yeah, he's someone that I I really rock with. He's someone that I believe in heavily. Shout out Igwe for real. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's just songs that I'm like, yeah, let's do this together, and like let's just do this, like you know, let's make it make sense and yeah. things that I feel like were amazing. But for my actual artist stuff, like that's me singing or me actually orchestrating and putting together. I don't know what it's like to release that because I come from a producer world where I'm. In the producer world, I'm chasing what the the other artist is okay with. Mm-hmm. I just sent an idea recently to one of my good friends, Amir Obey. He's an amazing, amazing artist and a writer as well. He's written for Drake and mm-hmm. Party and all this stuff. But I sent him something. He's like, dude, you need to just release this. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. He's like, I know you're probably thinking about what other people think. He's like, dude, like, I know you feel something off this. Mm-hmm. You got to just drop that. Yeah. And it's about remembering the initial feeling when you when you created your piece Mm -hmm. how it made you feel initially because like for example this painting i'm looking at i'm like bro this is a sick painting right i keep looking at this painting it's amazing yeah thank you you probably seen this already so many times that you're like okay you know what i'm saying like for for me that's how i am with my work like music i'll hear the same song over and over to a point where i'm like i've lost the feeling sometimes it's it's hard to like the thing is that the way i create is i create so much right like I'm like already thinking about the next three things, and as we were talking about this yesterday, he's like, because in the moment I was painting, I was like, okay, well, let's make it drip up. Right. And he's like, how, how do you do that in the moment? I said, honestly, because I don't, it doesn't need to be perfect. That's why. Right. And part of that is my brand and my style, but also because I just need to answer the call, and then I also know I'm going to create next, so I don't need to get hung up on anything that doesn't feel perfect right if it feels like i was getting the idea out and then i can just move on you know so i would love to sit and bask in a lot of like stuff that i make but i'm just like on to the next and that and that's the problem right and because you you found who you are you found i think with with artists a lot of artists you'd be surprised they don't know who they are especially nowadays with music music's very easily accessible Mm -hmm. back then like i mean i remember having to go buy cds if you oh, really yeah. wanted to hear something you remember those oh days. yeah bro tapes but, <laughs> like but CDs, you would you, you would it. value those 10 to 15 20 dollars that you would spend you're like i'm gonna actually have to listen to this mm-hmm. and really find something i like and if you didn't like it the review was valid now it's like i'm just gonna play and skim every song and just find the ones that really resonate with me through the first 30 seconds if you could predict uh do you think there would be another vessel for us to value music more or do you think that we'll just I not, think not value it as much in the future as we used to. I I really don't know. I think I think the stream I think the streaming era is is beautiful still. I think there's still a beauty mm-hmm. in it that more people could create more and we could find new acts easier mm-hmm. and I think that's great. I it'd be nice to see people value and and do their CD stuff again like vi- I know vinyls kind of doing a little comeback where people yeah. are collecting vinyls and that's sick. My daughter is 11. She has vinyls. Yeah, that's. And she's sick. like, "Hey, can you get me this one vinyl?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure, okay." No, I mean, and funny enough, that pays us more. It's funny. Really? It's it's, it's an actual unit, like for yeah. all. You know what I'm saying? Like rather than streaming, like you got to stream a song. I think 
one to three thousand times for it to count as one unit or i, wow. I forgot which one it, it's like there's like a math to I, I could google and it'll make more sense yeah but rather than you just buy a cd and it's like one what? unit yeah you yeah know what i'm saying it's like it's like that that changes everything obviously that supports the creators and the creatives more right like if you have a friend and they produce a song and you buy the individual song it's like oh man shout out shout out to you thank you but i yeah. think cole was just talking about this in an interview like the reason why that song they did went number one a lot of people thought the yeet one was gonna go number one because that one was going crazy i think it's i just looked yesterday because i was looking at songs i was like i look at the charts sometimes when right. i do my live streams i'm like who's who's popping and uh that yeet song was number one but it was like this was Cause, number one because cole, cole fans and drake fans buy like the og fans will yeah. buy the actual song yeah oh they'll buy the things and that's what makes it that's yeah. what helps them is like because they come from that era where they like, yeah i have to purchase this I, and it's not like they're telling people to purchase it though yeah. but it's uh, he was just talking about it's like i know our fans like i use like at least my fans purchase my shit i mean you were at the travis scott concert I, I feel like he's a genius. The Marketing live genius. shows are gonna become the more the most valued real life experience, especially yes. with AI, especially with virtual entertainment. There's nothing like feeling the heat from the pyro, or yeah. s jumping next to someone who's sweating and a little seeing, uncomfortable. Seeing the stage design, seeing yeah. seeing all the all the film and all the things that they put together on it, from even how they. You know what's the theme how they dress or what's this like with travis right that i that i observed in that world of travis is man that's why travis is who he is is you'll see you'll see a lot of people wear cactus jack merch or travis scott merch mm -hmm. you're dying to wear his shoes you're dying to get the shirt he's wearing you're dying he he knows how to it's like a mini yay in a way it's like yeah so you want to wear what he's wearing in a way yeah and obviously it's not a mini. i don't want to call travis a mini yay because he's really his own thing but like he comes from Kanye, which is funny because it's like Kanye is the same thing. Whatever Kanye was wearing or whatever mm -hmm. he's wearing, you want it. I think it's more it's so like, an example of a powerful personal brand, like yeah. one of the most powerful personal brands. Because Kanye the knows how to brand. And then Tra I feel like Travis was someone who really observed Kanye. I was like, I'm going to do this in my own brand because it's so hard to compare them together. It's just, you know, they came from each other and yeah. you're just not surprised that people want to wear the same, the same shoes, the clothing, great designs, great taste. You know, he comes, you know, he's... I mean, you know, an, art, an artist that uh, is recently standing out to me that I love, and more so for the personal brand and, and like, the world that I know they're going to create is Tizo. Oh, Touchdown. man, Tizo. He's such a good good person, bro. Like, He's... Man, he's I, I listened to his album, and I was listening to it with uh, my 17-year-old stepdaughter. She hadn't heard it. I was like, you ever heard of Tizo Touchdown? She's like, what? Let me put it on. And we listened to the songs full through, and it was so different. It goes from like, kind of an alternative, like, and then like melodic, and then he's like, sounds like a male SZA in some parts, <laughs> and it's just takes you on a journey. I'm like, I don't care about the genre. I care about the world that he's living in. You can hear his character in his songs. Yeah, he's a very he's a very nice person. Very silly too. Yeah, it's like he has personality. Obviously, you can see it, it yeah. when you see the more more of him and. Man, he's just he's just a kid who really, really is expressing himself, and, and we're here to see it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We're, Super nice guy. I love that we still, that there's artists that are still fearless, that despite uh, any, like, internet talk, that they're like, this is me, no matter what the world says. And that's says. hard for a lot of artists to do. A lot of artists sometimes will... You know, hey, like I'm gonna flex till I get there. Like yeah. when they got it, they just become like, oh man, I got it all. And it's like, no nah, man, who who are you really? Mm -hmm. Tizo is really who he is, man. Like he yeah. he's it's. I think you said it earlier. It's like a he's like a kid, bro. And in in, yeah. a, in a beautiful way, it's like man, like you are who you are. Like you're expressing yourself in a very like great way. Like he's not a kid in the sense, but I'm saying it's like no, he's, he's a not. Kid he's, at heart. He, yeah, exactly. He's a kid at heart. It's it's just like. That's that's important for people to have that like that character of mm -hmm. like being authentic and being you no matter what, you know. And um, there's people who are amazing artists in the sense of like oh man like you got this mystery for like I think I think that's what's sick about Travis. Travis came out with Utopia, mm -hmm. but if you observe all his other albums like he's it's a mystery like what's next. Yeah, he always has like this what's next at Valley what what's what's the next look what's the next era. Tizo Tizo has that too. Tizo, yeah. He's on his sound just in the beginning, and I love that Travis put him on such a big platform. He won. So here, I heard, uh, is it New Jam? 
Is that the song? Mo- that he, modern, mo- mo- modern New Jam, yeah. Modern yeah. New Jam. So I heard it, and I thought it was like some European artist like that was doing the... Uh, the no, yo, Tito's been on a crazy run, too. Yeah. Like, you start, you realize, you, a, lot of po- a lot of people probably realize, oh, this is the guy from the Travis song, Modern Day Jam, but then you'll listen to... Uh, you listen to the Don one that he did, uh, that oh, went crazy. That. Yeah, no, the Tito's been on an insane run. He's he was on two songs on Drake's album too. Okay. He did Amen and yes. Seventy Nine Twenty Nine Santa. The last album, right? Yeah, the yes. last yeah for all the dogs. So it's like you just see Tito's run lately, and it's like, he's he's someone that we're definitely going to hear more of. Yeah. I think people like that is is very special. Like those are those are up and coming people. That I'm like, yeah. I, I was just talking. I was like, "Man, I'm I'm excited to see what you're coming up with next, man." And it's funny because I've I've met Tizo two other times from the other time, and yeah. one of them we were, we were at our friend's studio. This is this is what I think is sick about him is all the stories is we were at the Fourth of July just cooking up, and he just comes in with like a box of these hot dogs that are only made in Texas. I think they're called Zumos. Okay. Oh man, <laughs> and it's just like it's just such a random thing. It's like oh, like we're already. We're at 4th of July, we're having a barbecue, but he just comes in with his own, like, sausages. He's like, man, these are only made in, like, my hometown. And it's, like, these things that I'm like, oh, bro, like, it's just something that I just remember. I thought was so funny at the time. Like, bro, what? Like, you just bring your own sausages. I just think, like, artists, creatives, you just have to own who you are. And that's why Dude, we say go experience beautiful. life because that helps define how you feel about certain situations and then how you express that. And that could be through your, it's being, it's being yourself too. It's being yourself because people read that, man. People see that mm-hmm. people could feel it in your art. People could see it even when they hang out with you, like this, like this creating stuff. It, it's important to also connect with others. Not just like, Oh yeah, let's just paint together. Like, no man, let's, yeah. let's go grab food. Let's go hang out. Let's just like figure it out and see if we're meant to be friends or meant to just like, work together there's some people that are meant to just work yeah and there's people that are meant to be connected and you'll know who's who yeah you know what i'm saying that's 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 a hard thing about business too especially in this business and creating is we love so much what we do and sometimes it's deeper than like i hire people to handle my business Mm -hmm. i I like to just deal with who i need to deal with yeah and i'll know when something's business and i'll know when something's more like okay like we could hang out and shit but um but you also we meet a lot of people a lot you gotta decipher you know, I guess who's who's adding the positive energy and who's taking it away. Right. And if there's like new energy that oh, is man. adding positive, and you're like, okay, let's. I want to make you time st- for you that. You might stick around. Yeah. There's people that you know will help you be a better person. Those people oh, yeah. who will improve your art too, and you mm-hmm. want them around. But then there's also people who are super talented, but their personality just kind of could ruin your energy. Yeah. And those are people where he's like, all right, man, like whenever it's really, whenever I really need you, I know what you could do. Yeah. I'll hit you up. And it's, it's, and it's not taking that personal, right? It's yeah. like, you know, I, I know that sounds like, oh man, damn, like then don't work with me. It's like, no, you're talented. I want to do business with you, but it's also yeah. a connection. I, I wanna, connection is important though. I want to work with people I can hang out with also. No. And, and that's funny, right? Like it just sucks right because it just sucks to be like oh man don't, your personality brings negative energy if you tell someone that it, actually, it fucks up the vibe obviously oh, but for sure. <laughs> but at the same time it's like like i said it's also learning how to like if we're working like let's say if an artist puts us in the room together mm-hmm. i'm working with you bro don't trip like yeah you, like we might have had whatever shit like but business is business yeah but if i can ever choose who to work with i'm only going to work with people who i really fuck with yeah not everybody could do that though especially when they're starting sometimes when you're starting you kind of have to work with whoever's really listening yeah if if that's how they are sometimes you could just wait for the right person but man like at least in music and production like hustle beats talent right now Mm -hmm. there's people who really are hustling. wait say that again just so that people are watching this they're like in that shift right now of hustle beats we're in an era where hustle is really beating talent you could be one of the most talented creatives ever but if you're not hustling your Mm -hmm. work there's bullets that you unfortunately do have to bite. There's people that sometimes you unfortunately have to f- fucking deal with. Mm-hmm. But if you just get in that mentality, like, oh, yeah, I'm hustling right now. I'm hustling yeah. right now. And one day you'll, you know, if you just hustle hard enough, you'll be put in a position where you get to move shit around and you start keeping things that you like around. And, you you know, it's 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 a journey, man. It's a journey. Not everybody, you know. We can't we can't choose who listens to us sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's it's whoever you see is paying attention to you and if the person that's paying attention to you could bring you some sort of value, 
work with it and then it's going to keep growing and it keeps growing and you you know it, it gets to a point where you pick and choose who you wish to have in your circle who you wish to help you who you wish and you know that's why you always hear whenever any of these great artists you always hear these stories like oh man like this person's so cutthroat like you'll hear of kanye west firing an engineer or firing anybody it's like yeah man because that's how he is mm -hmm. it, it sounds cutthroat but that's his journey yeah he needs people around him for him to create this way much respect yeah. you know what i'm saying there's people that will talk about travis oh man travis this down the third who that's how he is man i was listening to this uh podcast yesterday and they were um they were talking about someone asked them you know how do you find a, a work-life balance and they said when you're building something and if you're asking yourself while you're building how do i find a balance you're not gonna win mm -hmm. and there's seasons for different things in your life and if you're building don't think about balance go get the work done right and then if it's if you can create the momentum when it's going then you can also have that balance or, or you can put energy in other parts of your life that really need it because you do have to take care of your health your family your yeah. mental you know Dude, everything I, I just hired a trainer to oh, take great. to take because I, I was i've so far lost 30 pounds wow but, but i was that's a lot yeah that's Congrats. a good it's a good amount but i started you know really just working out and i was like man because you know, I, you know, when you grow a family, man, it's bro. You got to, I am, <laughs> you know, my, my body was like, you get I, I put on pregnancy and, weight. <laughs> yeah, no marriage and and kids. It's just you, you have good, you have a good time, man. And absolutely. So I was taking care of that, and um, you know, I, I just I saw it one time I weighed myself, and I was like, this is not okay. I hired that, and that's the thing. I get, and at least in what I do, I'm sitting most of the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not active. I'm not this. I'm like, no, I need to force that. But it's when it comes to time and balance, man, it's important for everyone around you, everyone in your surroundings to understand mm -hmm. that, yeah, there's moments for that. You can't control things sometimes. There's moments that, like, yeah, I need to work. Like, yo, there's people who have deadlines to ideas, and if I don't work, someone's going to take my chance. Yeah. If someone needs something for me right now, if I don't do it, I have to be aware somebody else would do it. And if somebody else does it and they shine, you're just always going to be thinking, damn, I had that chance. Yeah. They came to me first. Oh man, like, oh, this album's coming out. The executive producer hits you. Hey, oh, send me ideas. If I'm not consistently sending an idea every other day, mm -hmm. yo, here's something I made. Here's something I made. Here's something I made. Hey, here's my Dropbox. Here's access. It's it's a it's a mentality, right? Like, I it's funny because the the more time I've spent producing, it's actually not even about what I create and how I create it. It's about how I push it. Yeah. It's yeah. how do I sell my product? Yeah. I I could stop creating ideas today and spend the next two, three years pushing every idea I've done. Yeah. I could still survive pushing every idea. Hey, here's this. Hey, here's this. Hey, here's this. But the, the thing is I love creating. Yeah. That's what makes me fall in love. And it's, it's funny because someone, producer always ask me, like, yo, how many ideas do you make a week? Three, four. Not much. Mm -hmm. I'd rather focus on three, four really good ideas than making 15, like, oh, here's some 15, okay. Yeah. Rather than, you know, here's three to four that really made me feel something. And I could really focus on four ideas. I started really thinking like that. Like I'd rather, in the end of the year, make sixty ideas, and it's easier for me to manage sixty ideas than managing like, oh, I have two hundred ideas. That's how I feel about my live show schedule right now. Because in the past, before twenty twenty, I was doing up to a hundred sh live shows a year around the world. Right. And then when I finally got a break, I right. was like, I can't keep doing that. And now, it, and then it started coming back right away. And I was like, whoa, 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 let's, so I'm in, I'm in this transition right now where I want to do the least amount of high quality live shows, big impact, big money, like whatever it is, but, and also giving more to each one. Like recently I've been rehearsing so much more before I go to a show. I have a, a NBA halftime on Mon on Sunday. Sick. I want to rehearse, but I've got like. I got family stuff between now and then, but I'm going to find time to get one or two runs in just to feel it out. And, and I'm sure your family understands. That's the thing. Absolutely. Right? That's super important. I always like, that's something I always tell people like someone will be like, yo, how do you do marriage? And this is like, you have to be with someone that understands who you are yeah. or someone who understands what you want to become. Yes. My wife's man. always, my wife's always known that I want to be something in music. So when she sees this, she's like, no, I get it. Like J Cole's finishing an album right now. T minus yeah. is executive producing it. Yeah. You know, and I, I I actually don't know if he's executive producing it, but I know he's very involved in it. Yeah. And T minus is someone who I work with a lot. And bro, I'll be sending T every other day something. I'll be like, you know, I'll get a text, hey, 
he liked this idea. Let me go make another three. Wow. Let me go do this. Let me go. Th-. It's like, and that's just things like that. Like, I don't know if this is bro's last album, but I'm trying. Yeah. You know, but it's things like that that it's like, okay, like, hustle, right? It's like, like you're saying, like, man, I have this halftime show. I need to rehearse twice, but I also have this. And it's like, it's but that you know time too who you want to become and the people in your life. Right. Sense it, feel it. They see that the work going into you wanting to become that as well. Like you've dedicated, you've dedicated your life to that. So right, man. I I know we could sit here and talk for hours. I already Ages. I already know, bro. Ages. But um, I don't want to keep you too long. But I do want to ask you one last thing before we wrap this up. For an artist, producer, someone who's they're in a shift right now. Maybe they have a full time job, but they like they see themselves already as that successful artist. They have the vision there and they're ready to take a shift. What advice would you give them right now? And I know you've given a lot, like more than than I could even ask for, but what would you tell that person right now who's maybe on their way to work, on their way home, going to the gym, just knowing that like they wanna fully live who they envision? What would you tell them from the experience of what you've gone through becoming this incredible producer creator? Man, it, it's it's meant to be scary. It's you know, if it was easy everybody would do it. You know, that's why that's why it's a journey. That's why when you hear somebody talk about how they came up, that's why they're so proud of it. That's why when someone shows their accolades, no one's going to celebrate you better than you, right? So you got to think about it. if you're if you're going to work and you know you're going to work that you're not comfortable in because you know what you want to do in life. You got to start plotting and planning. Like when I worked as a mailman, what made my situation scary is I had a wife and kid. You know, it's like, man, am I really going to quit my mailman job and who's providing? <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, I made sure to save up enough money to take care of me for a year to two. I made sure I had an option to that if, if I didn't make this in this amount of time, I could take this money. Um, it's about playing smart too. A lot of times people will make a lot of crazy decisions off being crazy and listen, take take the crazy route if you really feel it in your heart and soul. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's you, right? You got to bet on yourself. So it's but, it's I love that though. It's meant to be scary whether you play it smart or crazy, but it's I and I it's, can, it's, it's I about agree. betting on yourself. Like for me, w- the only reason I made my decisions that safe, I would have done it sooner on some really crazy stuff, but what what held me back at my time is I had a wife and kid. Mm-hmm. If I fail, I'm failing wife, I'm failing my kids, I'm failing all that. Yeah. And that's what was scary for me. So um if you're if if you're dealing with that definitely you gotta sit back and think if you have a wife and kid, plot with your wife and kid. What made me quit Ooh. my job was I, I sat down with my wife. We we were arguing a lot at the time because man, when you're in an environment you don't want to be in, yeah. You're you're not mentally Right, you know what I mean? So I sat down with her, and I was like, how can we make this work? And we planned it. Listen, I was like, all right, end of this year, I'm quitting. Just letting you know, and I I quit. Man, it took me one solid year of hard work. By the end of the year, I got myself a publishing deal, everything. And so obviously that story is mine, but that doesn't mean it's like that for everyone. Mm -hmm. It could be better for someone. Mm -hmm. It could be a longer period. It doesn't matter. The point is pay attention to your surroundings pay attention to who's paying attention to you see value in whoever you can see value in if something doesn't make sense okay sometimes you got to disconnect from friends sometimes there's certain people that it might hurt you but you got to let them go because they're stopping you it's about paying attention and 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 focusing on you it's i know it sounds very selfish obviously when people are like yeah focus on you but what about no man like this is your life you know, and if, if you're going to have anyone around you supporting you, that you support and you help out as well, you know, they got to understand who you are. And if they can't, you know, that's something you really have to meditate on. That's something you have to think about. And, you know, it's, it's important to live life, too. It's important yeah. to disconnect from it and really, you know, visualize what you're going through outside of its scene. You know, yeah. go live life and see how are you feeling. What can you improve in, on yourself if you're very, very locked in into your work? check in on yourself man like i remember i still go through it sometimes where i'm like man i i I actually was going through this a lot recently like i I could be doing more i feel like i could be doing more and people will be like yo you did 12 records this year and the year's not done yet that's that's really good there's people who barely do one record every other year yeah 
know what I'm saying? And it's that's like, incredible. You know, it's like, oh, that's that's it's a blessing. But at the same time, like, here I am. I could do more. I could do more. I could do more. And it's because I know I could do more. Mm-hmm. But it's also about that balance. It's about believing in yourself, understanding and being real with yourself. Don't surround yourself around people. It's like makes you feel good. Like, no, surround yourself around people that want you to be better. Yeah. Right. There's a difference about someone wanting you to be better and being negative. It's distinguishing that. It's it's having discernment about who you really allow around you. Yeah. You know, it's it's that I think those are things that I would recommend people to really focus on is create a better surrounding for yourself that helps you grow and mature more and really like understanding everyone's value and and team team is important, man. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's that's really real. You know what I'm saying? That's super real. But believing in yourself is the number. That's where it starts, man. It's really having a vision for yourself. You can't you can't build a brand without a vision. You know what I'm saying? You need a vision, and just don't be scared about it. This is it's not easy. Yeah, being scared is okay, but moving it's forward, meant to be scary. <laughs> mo- moving forward, just it's you're betting on yourself, man. Like you want other people to bet on you too. Yeah, right. So it's it's I'm sure there's people who would bet on me now but you know at the time it didn't make sense how can we make it make sense mm-hmm. how can you show people that you have value even though there's no results yet mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying it's it's a lot of putting yourself through things and like I said I think uh, it's something that helped me really succeed more is when I started changing my surroundings the people who I let around me the people who I really would vent to you know start changing it to people that will really help you build don't be scared to reach out the worst someone could say is no. There's yeah. no such thing. Persistency is key too in this game, mm-hmm. in any creative game. Like, what if you never sent that email to that person? Right? Oh yeah, I would have missed out <laughs> on a on a great story, yes, but, but also it's, a great relationship too. It, exactly, it's reaching out is is the most free thing you could do. This, you know, nobody's ever gonna want it more than you. Yeah, like you could know you're super talented, but we're it's understanding we're in an era where it's more accessible than ever Mm -hmm. so hustle will beat talent is man if you're a talented person find someone that's going to push you then yeah have someone like you know deal with there's a lot of talented people that i'll see and i'm like let me pick you up man let's let's work (laughs) you know what i'm saying so it's uh yeah nah that the biggest advice i could say is be be yourself live life and just better yourself like no everything i just said just repeat that again i want so. I, if, if uh you've made it this far you're watching listening that last part just like clip that uh, i'm gonna work we got to put that clip out just so you can listen to that over and over again i know i will and there's a lot to it but i love how you started that that last part which is just it's meant to be scary and um brian thank you for just dropping oh countless gems man thank you with for me having here today me here. with all of us who are listening and watching and uh how can people follow your journey man um you can find me on instagram that's where i'm definitely most active in it's um at b-r-y-v-n music so brian music um some people say Briven. i love when people say Briven. <laughs> it's hilarious but yeah Briven music whichever one yeah I'm, i love both names you can follow me there um and Spotify, Some, you, I saw your playlist <laughs> oh, yeah, produced so, by so yeah, Riven. <laughs> yeah, on my Instagram bio, you can see my Spotify playlist, or if you have Apple Music, it's all there. I'm actually updating it real soon. Okay. So, so yeah, it's going to be a lot of, there's a lot more records from then yeah. th- there. God's been good, man. God's been good. So yeah. you can follow me there, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll be announcing a lot, of, a lot of things. I know I'm yeah. dropping a lot of music next year, personal okay. music and stuff, so it's going to be sick, definitely. Amazing. And new records on the way with amazing people yeah. too so man i love your creative energy but also it's just a great conversation i really no, man, really thank, appreciate your time thank you for having he, having me here for real man this was this was fun this is yeah. the first podcast so. and i got my trumpet ready for you to sample just <laughs> Dude, so you know yes yes no for <laughs> real i'm serious i'm serious man. i'm that'd serious bro i will pull that'd it out sick. yeah that'd be sick no let's that'd do be that fun. let's run it man yes for real. all right for real. Man. thank you appreciate thank you. you peace see ya Nah, man, that was fun. Yeah. No, thank you so much. <laughs> that was Appreciate fun. It. Yeah. Oh, damn.